Hello, we're going to look at chapter 16, managerial accounting. And when we talk about managerial accounting, you've just finished or completed in 2010 and up till now in 2020, what's called financial accounting, which is external reporting. But here in managerial accounting, you're starting to be more inward focused of generating reports internally in your company in order to drive your business plan. So think about in terms of the focus and needing information because oftentimes accounting information externally through financial reporting is not always as usable as a company would want to actually run their, their core business. And so managerial accounting used to be called cost accounting. Uh, I spent many years working in that area, of course, as well as financial accounting. But let's go ahead and look at uh, some of these exercises. Now I'm going to start uh, by sharing the actual pre-lecture. I haven't been doing that on the other exercises in the other chapters, but uh, I'm going to do that here just to sort of give a quick overview of what's going on here. So the pre-lecture here, chapter 16, which again is managerial accounting, you can see there, uh, which is not a characteristic of management accounting. Management accounting information is not for external use. It's for internal. Um, so emphasizing external financial statements is not part of managerial accounting. Of course, we're always concerned about integrity. So let's look at this one. This is the first exercise that you'll see in this chapter. And what they want you to calculate is what is the period cost. Now, as you look at the PowerPoint, you know there are product costs and there are period costs. And really when you say period costs, it's really period expenses because they really isn't a cost because what is a cost? A cost is, a, is an asset. Um, cost to get sold is coming off of your balance sheet from inventory into an expense known as cost to get sold. So when you talk about product costs and period costs, product costs is what's going to be inventoried, and that is direct material, direct labor, and overhead. Those are the big three. And what they're asking here is what is the period cost? That's anything other than those three items. So the answer here, looking at direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, those three, those top three are product costs that are going to be inventoried. And then once they're inventoried on your balance sheet, when they're sold, then it becomes an expense known as cost to get sold. It goes from the balance sheet to the income statement. So the SGNA, selling general and administrative there, 165,000 is your period expense. Uh, which is the following is a direct cost, right? Direct cost of manufacturing sport boat, cost of the boat engine. Yes. Depreciation on delivery is not part of, of your manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead is everything that you can't group into direct material and direct labor. It's everything associated with your facility and your manufacturing costs, but it doesn't include depreciation on a delivery truck. Once something leaves your docks, typically the title has passed, and so that cost associated or that expense associated with delivery trucks is not part of your cost to get sold. All, right, all these others say plant, plant utilities, plant property taxes, plant equipment. You can see the word plant, it's talking about overhead. Which the fund is a manufacturing company and a service company does not cost to get sold. Manufacturing company, service company, there is no cost to get sold. They're just performing a service like an HVAC company that comes out and works on your heating or air conditioning. They don't have, I mean, they may put units or replace a pump or replace a motor or whatever it might be on your, on your air conditioning or, or heat pump, but that is not something they manufacture, which becomes cost to get sold. So they're basically, as they say, service company. All right, so here's a good exercise. <clears throat> and this is a basic calculation here that um, you need to learn in this chapter. And what it is, is beginning inventory plus purchases, in this case, is goods available 
minus ending inventory, is cost to get sold. And so in this case, and I'll show this up on the screen here shortly, they want to know what's the direct material. Well, direct materials, you start out with 6,000. Uh, it says that we purchased direct materials of 104, so we had, what, $110,000 of goods available. What's my ending inventory? 1,000. So the answer is 109, right? Oops, what did I miscalculate? 6,000 beginning, purchase 104 is 110. Ending inventory, or oh, ending, oops, 5,000, not 1,000. Get in a hurry here. 5,000 is my ending direct materials. Not a working process. So what I've got here, let me share that with you. Or stop the share. What you see there is my beginning inventory. What did I purchase? So I had $110,000 to account for. If my ending inventory is five, then my plug number has to be this cost to get sold, doesn't it? So $105,000, that is a basic equation that you can use for raw material, you use it for work in process, you use it for finished goods. You also use it for a service company, right? I mean, we're talking about raw material, but what if you were working in a clothing company, retailer, which you're buying clothing, right? Whatever you purchased plus what was your available inventory, or your beginning inventory plus what you purchased is your clothing available for sale, then what your ending inventory, and it gives you what your cost gets sold at. Of course, you would do that by barcode label for each of your line items. So we're doing this in total, but think about it in terms of individual articles that you're selling. And that's why companies use barcodes to, to control their inventory. All right, going back to that screen. Look at number eight, enterprise resource planning. The big thing, SAP, you hear a lot about SAP here, which is something that um, if you got some extra classes to take, electives, I know you like to take stuff that's easy, but take over in computer science, take the three courses required to get your SAP certification. I'm telling you that would be a real um, win for you on your resume and getting a job. Everybody wants someone with, with ERP or SAP experience or certification. Of course, today's business environment, we are shifting to more a service company or service economy here in the United States, global competition, time-based. All right, so that is the pre-lecture. All right, let me go back and open up the next one, chapter 16, see what we've got here. Hopefully you can see that. Let me stop share and then reshare just to make sure. All right, there we go. So here we've got uh, just sort of a mix and match. One, two, three, four, five. Artist wages. They're kind of like operations or direct labor, right? Wages and materials warehouse, they're not involved in the actual process, so it's not direct labor. Now, direct material and direct labor is by the term direct, people who are actually producing that part of their product. And it's usually easy to tell the direct material and the direct labor. It's everything else, all of your warehouse workers, your quality assurance, your dock workers, environmental maintenance and repair, so all those other indirect labor that's hard to directly tie in with a department. That's why it's indirect. And any indirect labor, any indirect materials, like if you were buying 55 gallon drums of some type of a lubricant that's used at all departments, you need to have some way to group all that together in total to allocate out. So, so direct labor would be artists, wages and materials, warehouse workers. Well, by paper, that's gotta be direct material, right? Depreciation, it's gotta be overhead, other manufacturing overhead, manufacturing plant manager salary, indirect labor. Property taxes, five, glue for envelopes. You know, that's a good one. You think, well, envelopes, if, if you're making greeting cards, why would the glue 
it's going on an envelope and it's associated with the car, why would you not have that as direct material? Probably because the glue is, is insignificant. It's not material, as we say in accounting. It's not significant enough to be a part of something direct because you can trace the glue directly to those envelopes. So hey, that's not much money, just go ahead and put it into that big bucket called overhead and we'll allocate it that way. Now, when I was at Exile, we manufactured batteries. And once the battery was completed, it was full of acid and charged. When it came off the assembly line, went on to a pallet prior to having uh, specific labels put on it, like Die Hard or O'Reilly's or AutoZone or whatever it might be. We put a little sticker on the end that was the size of a dime that had the date that the month and the year that the battery was charged. And that little sticker costs like one one hundredth of a cent or something, or one tenth of a cent for each one. It's so minuscule. I mean, it was traceable to that department, to that process, but the cost was so insignificant, we just expensed it. And so that's very similar to what you see with glue for envelopes. All right, number two. So here we've got, <clears throat> Uh, several things going on here, but there's there's the actual formula that I showed a minute ago. But they they added one thing in; they added freight in. Now, you know, we talked about freight out a minute ago is not a part of the product, but freight in is the cost of bringing material into your facility. You do count that as part of your purchases, but freight out is always ignored. It's like that at X side. It was like that at Lear. That's just typical. So we have beginning merchandise inventories of $8,700, there it is. We're adding all of our purchases, there's 47,000. We're adding the freight in to bring that product in, gets added in. So goods available for sale in total is 58,000. So what's my ending inventory? 5,200, so my plug number, cost of goods sold is 52,800. That means 52,800 had to come out of my inventory and go to my income statement. Because all of this on here is balance sheet. These are balance sheet calculation. And so what's not on my balance sheet has to be in cost to get sold, which means it comes off my balance sheet, a credit to inventory, a debit to cost to get sold, which is really cost to get sold expense. All right, number three, income statements for merchandising companies could beat the missing amounts. All right, this is kind of a fill in the blank. You can see there, you have to kind of go backwards sometimes. Uh, down here at the bottom, if that's 10,000 and that's 36, that must be 26, right? Gross prof profits, 36,000. All right, so sales revenue. And we got to get our cost to get sold because my sales revenue minus my cost to get sold, 98 minus 62 is 36. So the question is, how do I get to 62, right? Well, if my ending merchandise inventory is 1,900, then cost of goods available for sale must be 63,900. Right, and my purchase and frame was 51, so 51 from 63.9. I must have started with 12,900. All right, so you can see pretty much the process there of figuring out how to fill in the blank on these. All right, number four, another fill in the blank. You can look at the answers there, of course, you've got that already in your homework. I think it gives you the answer there after so many tries. <clears throat> ERP, just in time, e-commerce, TQM, that's a big part of manufacturing today, total quality management. Everybody in business needs to understand these topics. I never heard of triple bottom line. Economic, social, and environmental impact sort of new. Number five, looking at these companies, you can tell by looking at their financial statements what kind of company they are. Cost of goods manufactured, that's a giveaway, right? It's got to be a manufacturing company. What about B? Service revenue, it's got to be a service company. C, merchandise inventory, tells you it's got to be merchandising, pretty simple. Six,
they give you the data there. You have to fill in, fill in the blanks, revenue, cost of goods sold, gives you my gross profit. Again, cost of goods sold is my product cost, product cost and period cost. Product cost always are on my, my balance sheet as inventory. And then once it leaves my balance sheet and goes to the income statement, then it's cost of goods sold. So there's my gross profit. Then I subtract out the period expenses, selling an administrator. All right, so that's company A. What about company B? Service revenue, a little bit simpler, isn't it? Don't have to keep up with any inventory. They may have inventory, you know, like if you hire someone to come out and work on your heat pump, air conditioning, like I said earlier, they may come out there and put some type of replacement part on there and they say, well, we got this out of inventory. But more than likely that, all their inventory has been expensed when they purchase it. They don't have any inventory per se on their balance sheet. They just expense it and keep it in, as they say, inventory until they use it. All right, and then C is merchandising. There's the numbers. I can get that on one page, one screen. All right, and then finally number seven. There it is, period costs or operating costs that are expensed in accounting periods in which they are incurred. Product costs are all costs associated with gap, right? Because we got an inventory of it on the balance sheet until it's actually sold. It's what gap requires for financial, external financial reporting. Then it's transferred to expense, cost of goods sold. That's what I've been saying here all along. Y'all had that exercise first. On income statement, cost of goods sold, subtract from sales revenue, term of gross profit, gross profit minus period cost, gives you operating income. So here's the manufacturer of lawn care equipment, shaft and handle of weed trimmer, motor weed trimmer, those are direct material, right? Factory labor, those assembling that is direct labor. What about this nylon thread? It's not traced to the product. That's why it's just going to be put into overhead and allocated in some rational manner. The glue as well, it's not considered significant enough to be part of like the motor and the shaft and the handle. Those are higher cost parts. This other stuff like the nylon thread, the glue, they just charge it to manufacturing overhead and then allocate it to each department in some rational manner, usually by direct labor. Janitorial wages, depreciation, rent on plant, all of those. By sales commission, administrative salary, that's not a part of overhead. So those are going to go straight to your income statement. And it's really period cost, it's really period expense. All this other up here, manufacturing overhead, direct material and direct labor are inventoriable on the balance sheet. Plant utilities and then shipping costs for delivery is a period cost. Shipping costs on the product coming in that you're going to use, that is part of inventory. Remember, freight in. All right, so that's practice set one. Look at practice set, whoops. Practice set two. You know, one of those exercises, you start with your beginning inventory, plus your purchases, plus freight in, materials available, minus any inventory, give me my direct materials used. Number two, now here we're doing work in process. So that tells you this is cost of goods manufactured, right? Work in process, whip. Work in process is a department. At XI, we had 10 departments, 10 work in processes. It went from one whip to the next whip, to the next whip, and finally, it went to finished goods inventory. 
right? And it said and finished goods inventory until it was sold. Cost of goods sold. The whip, raw material, finished goods, all three of those are inventory accounts that operate in the same algorithm when you're trying to figure out what's my balance. <clears throat> if I've got work in process of 7,000, and it says my direct material is used in that department. Because you can always have direct material introduced to a second, third, or fourth working process down the line. I also have direct labor introduced in that department and then overhead that's been applied. So all that together is 52,000. And so I've got $59,000 cost to account for. If my ending working process is 2,000, that means my cost against manufacturer is 5,700. But you can see this thought process through here, the only thing different is this right here, those three items, instead of having a purchases, right, like for a merchandising company, the addition to beginning inventory and subtracting ending balance, it's the same algorithm. All right, number three, same way of finished goods inventory. What's my beginning balance? How much did I manufacture, right? 183,000 goods available. Ending finished goods gives me my cost of goods sold. Because now it goes from inventory to my income statement. Four, now we're looking at a service company. Somebody provides haircuts. Says they cut the hair of 220 clients and earned $5,400 in revenue incurred the following operating costs. But the question is, compute the cost of service of providing one haircut. It doesn't say anything about profit. What's the cost associated with that? So the 5,400 is irrelevant. So I've got hair supplies expense, 650 wages, utilities, depreciation. So if I add all that up together, that should be $1,870. Divided by 220 says it cost me $8.50 to, to give one haircut. So obviously when I price my haircut, I need to have, what, at least $9 if I want to make 50 cents. It says 5,400 though. It's not part of the exercise, but how much are they charging per haircut? 5,400 divided by 220. That's a strange number, $24.55. Maybe they charge different amounts for different people, different for ladies than men. All right, number five. Here's another fill in the blank. We just need to back up through this. 51.1, if that's 55.2, that's gonna be 4,100. Total manufacturing cost during a year is 45.1, so that's gotta be 20,400 for these three lines. Direct material use, direct labor, and, and overhead to equal 45.1. And so 10,100 plus 45.1 is equal to 55,200. All right. Same process for each of these three companies. A lot of information here. Beginning work in process, hundred thousand dollars, right there. And get all this on one screen. Maybe if I made it smaller, yeah, that'll work. There we go, hundred thousand dollars. So we're doing all three categories here: direct materials, right? How much direct material did we use? Then our cost of goods manufactured, and then cost of goods sold. So these are like nested calculations within this. So direct materials, first of all, 57,000, there's beginning inventory, plus purchases, materials available, ending inventory, all that's given, gives me 184,000. Then the direct labor, right? Material, labor, and overhead. The big three, material, labor, and overhead, 80, 184,000, 122, and then my manufacturing overhead, those are all listed there, 34,000, 
for indirect labor, 28,000 for insurance, 13,000 depreciation, and 5,000 repairs and maintenance. So what are they left off? Sales salaries, that's SG&A, that's not, it's not a part of this. Administrative, so those two are left off. That's not part of overhead. It's gotta be manufacturing related. And so there's my 184, 122, there's my overhead. Total manufacturing overhead and then total manufacturing costs incurred during the year is 386. So 386 plus the 100 gives me 486 to account for. If my ending inventory is 69,000, then that says cost against manufacturer is 417,000. All right. What is the unit product cost if Clark manufactured 2,085 lamps during the year? Well, let's see, is that 417 divided by 2085? Yep. So $417,000 cost of goods manufacturing divided by 2,085 lamps is $200 cost per lamp. And then number seven, you can see the answers there for requirement one, requirement two, cost of goods sold, pretty straightforward, pretty simple example. If you understand that number six we just did, that's probably a pretty good measure of how much you understand in this chapter. There's company B. All right, now let's look at the self-assessment. Okay, let's look at this last self-assessment. <clears throat> Three exercises here, and so this is sort of a involved exercise, but it's a good good practice problem. Uh, schedule cost of goods manufactured. So we begin over here with forty four thousand, picking off the right. Work in process. You now they show the three balances again. Those are the three inventory accounts: the direct materials, work in process, and finished goods on your balance sheet. And so finished goods is where once it comes into direct materials, it goes to work and process, ends up in finished goods. Then it comes off of finished goods and goes to your income, st income statements, cost of goods sold. Just to give you sort of, a, sort of an idea of what's taking place there. Um, you'll look at it like this. here look the bottom part of the page raw material work in process finished goods you can see it's going from a debit to one to a credit to come out of raw material to work in process out of work in process to finished goods out of finished goods to cost of goods sold and of course those three at the top are your balance sheet okay so looking at this exercise again, there's my 44,000. So you've got sort of a nested material usage in there, right? So there's my 25,000 plus my purchases, materials available, my sending inventory, materials used is 70. Then that takes care of material, then how much direct labor did I spend? What was my overhead? So that's 194,000 plus the 44 is 238. Any work in process is 27, so my cost against manufacturer is 211. And so that 211 gets added into my beginning finished goods, right? That's the final step. Gives me 225 minus ending finished goods, 23 is 202. Number two. We're just calculating the service revenue minus the expenses much simpler than what you see with manufacturing. 
income or loss. What is my cost per dog? Service to groom one dog. It looks like that should be 7,068. Let's look up here. 7,068 divided by 620 dogs, $11.40. And then finally, they give all that information there in a paragraph at the top, uh, drag materials used, 3 million right there. Beginning drag materials, 900,000, ending. So purchases must have been 2.8 million. You could probably use that other formula I gave you instead of using a new formula here to fill in the blank. Uh, beginning work in process, 1.1 million. Thanks my direct material, direct labor, overhead, the big three again. All These are all product costs, inventoryable on your balance sheet. And so that says goods available, manufacturing costs available, 26.2 million. My zinning work in process says goods manufactured, 24.9 million. And then my finished goods, 700 plus 24.9. All right, that's the self-assessment. That's an introduction to managerial accounting. And so we're getting to chapter 17 and 18, gonna be a little bit more uh, involved in looking at how do we handle this thing called overhead. I mean, direct material and direct labor is pretty straightforward. It's specifically traceable to what's going on. Anytime I would leave my office as controller and walk out into the production floor and watch what's going on with inventory flow, you knew exactly who the direct labor was and exactly what the direct material was by uh, each work and process center or each department, same thing. It was all that stuff that had to do with quality assurance, maintenance, environmental, dock workers, material handlers, janitorial, those aren't specifically traceable. So this big bucket called overhead is where you accumulate that. Just like you accumulate all the um, material and so forth, like electricity is a material or natural gas or whatever it might be. That's what's going to be grouped and then allocated in some rational manner to each of the working processes. So that's what we'll look at when we get into chapter 17 and 18 in this managerial accounting introduction. Have a good day.